Hello and welcome back to Sorting Algorithms Plus Plus. You're watching episode 2, Basic Trees. Now, there really isn't very much to say in introduction to today's episode, so I'm going to jump right into explaining to you what a tree actually is. Now, in computer science, one of the things we like to do is we would like to have, you know, a graph, essentially a bunch of points connected by edges, and that is supposed to tell us something regarding points of data and their relationship with each other. Essentially, a tree is a much simplified version of that. When we want to actually, you know, draw out a tree, it looks something like this. We start with a root, it sort of branches out, and well, there are other points of data, they can have their branches as well, and essentially any one of these child nodes that don't have any further child nodes, we call those leaves. So when we use the word tree, you can actually think of it in terms of a literal tree. What's important to note with regard to this particular data structure is that, well, things must follow this structure. You cannot have a link going like this, or, you know, looping back like this, nothing of that sort. Things will always have a certain kind of flow. And what's important is from the root, you should be able to have a single unique path to any node within the tree. If you think this looks complicated, well, I have good news for you. In fact, we're going to look at a very specific type of tree. This is called the binary search tree. One of the very important things you can see in a name is the word binary. What that means is that every node can have a maximum of two child nodes. And so what this means is we will not be seeing a whole lot of crazy branching. This is essentially the most complex kind of structure we will be working with. Maybe, you know, more levels. So hopefully this will make things easier to picture. Now, binary search trees also have an additional property. The property can be stated as such. If I were to inspect any node within the tree, essentially all nodes in its left subtree will have values smaller than the node I've picked. All values in the right subtree should have a value that is greater. If we were to add values into a binary tree, this is a valid tree. Why? Because essentially, if I were to pick any node, all the values to its left are smaller than it, and all the values on the right are greater. This is not a valid binary search tree, and the reason of course is because of this guy here. This is also not a valid binary search tree for the very simple reason that this guy has three children. So remember that both the rules we've covered earlier both apply, the fact that we need only two children at most per node, as well as the fact that every node will have that smaller and larger property. So very quickly, here are some ways in which we can manipulate a tree as a data structure. To add an item in a tree, essentially it needs to go from the top and slowly filter downwards until it gets to its correct position. In order to maintain the binary search tree property, that is the smaller and greater property, we're going to actually have to insert it into the correct position. So the process of insertion is the time where we actually, you know, check to see that we've done this correctly. So let's say now I already have a tree that's partially there, and I want to add a new number to it. Essentially, we start from the top, which is the root. We're going to do a comparison. Is this new number I'm adding actually larger or smaller than the value of the root? If it's smaller, I'll go to the left. If it's larger, I'll go to the right. In this case, it's smaller, so I'm going to go to the left, and we're going to settle beside the next node. This process repeats. Compare it with the node that is there, decide if it's smaller or larger, and then move along the line. Now, if you keep doing this, what's going to happen is the new item is just going to keep going down, 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 until it gets to a point where it does, you know, the same, am I larger, am I smaller kind of check. And then as it tries to go down to that side, it realizes that, hey, you've got no child node in that direction. When that happens, Essentially, all that needs to happen is the new node goes and rests there. This completes the insertion, while still ensuring that the binary search tree property is not violated. So let's very quickly walk you through this again. I'm going to add a new item. I'm going to check, should I go to the left or should I go to the right? I move down. I do the same check again. I move down. I do the same check again. And eventually, after doing the check, I realize that, hey, this node doesn't have a child in the direction I want to go. And that is where the new node takes its position. It sits there, and you form a child relationship. Essentially, that's it. Now, there is one special case for insertion, and that is if you have nothing and you want to insert a new node, obviously that node becomes the root. 
for basically any other state of the binary search tree, an insertion is just like how I described earlier. Now, there is actually one more thing we can do with a binary search tree, and that of course is to actually search for an item. Let's say now in this tree, I want to search for the number 5. Obviously, I start the same way as insertion from the top. However, we have to make one additional comparison, and that is for every single node you're looking at, you'll want to check to see if that is the node you're looking for. If that isn't the node you want, then you'll perform the same comparison as we did before. That will of course tell us whether we want to go to the left or to the right child to continue searching. Of course, if it's supposed to be smaller, I'll be going towards the left. If it's supposed to be larger, I'm going towards the right. By following this train of thought, I will also be able to you know, slowly move down. Except of course, at every node, I'm doing the extra check to see if that node is the node I'm looking for. So we move down a couple of times, and there you go. We've actually found it. There is our node number 5. If we were trying to look for a node that doesn't exist within a tree, essentially what's going to happen is we are still going to move from the top to the bottom. Eventually, we'll come to a node and we'll do our comparison. We'll realize that, oh, I need to travel in a certain direction. But as I attempt to move in that direction, I realize that there is nothing there. This will tell me for sure that the node I'm looking for does not exist within the tree. Essentially, that's it. That's all you need to know today. It's already quite a bit of content. So we'll just wrap it up here. In the next episode, we'll attempt to actually do some sorting using this data structure. But that's all there is for trees today. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 612tv. As always, don't forget I appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 612tv.